Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound. And now this is the introduction of the next project uh, I'm gonna be working on in a BMW 6 Series GT. It's not the, the Grand Coupe, it's the GT. It's quite a big, big car. Um, so we are going to fit a pretty high-end system in it um, and still keeping it rather OEM-ish, kind of OEM plus, nothing crazy, nothing on display really, but um, we had to go for certain equipment based on my preference, client's preference. So I'm gonna to explain to you what we are going to use. As you can see, everything is laid out here because we took a few nice pictures for you. You can find on, on Facebook and on Insta, you can check it in the description. Um, so we have the Zapco HDSP5 as a source. That's gonna be uh, the DSP for the system with the beautiful HD player, but the client is not really planning to use that function too much because we are going to integrate the factory head unit uh, coming down on fiber optic on most 25 and then we use the Helix SDMI 25 where uh, fiber optic comes in there and then the optical signal comes out fed into the DSP because it's just so convenient to use the factory head unit um, plus it plays flak, so I wasn't against it. Until it plays lossless, I'm, I'm fine, I'm okay, because there's no point to build a you know, high-end system that can reveal anything and then still play MP3 through it. We don't want that. But he will have the option to use the HG player as well with the inbuilt uh, player or the additional H uh, HD Bluetooth module that we can add to the system easily. So, the front end. We are going to use a three-way Focal Utopia M, the latest Utopia uh, setup up front. The eight, the eight-inch driver goes underneath the seats, um, and they are rather shallow. So, fingers crossed, it won't be a crazy job to fit these. I've seen people fitting these before. Plus, uh, I was asking around probably a month ago how people uh, did it. Some people did it, so it should be all right. The specs on this driver are rather ideal for that application. Um, and as you see, this driver has plenty of airflow behind it. So I'm really excited to see what it's gonna perform like in a BMW, because we didn't wanna use plug and play options, which are better than the factory Harman and Kardon, but uh, there's not that much of a difference. So hopefully this is gonna just bring a little bit more resolution and output. Um, we will see. Then the 3.5 mid range is gonna go to the bottom of the pillars in nicely fabricated, custom fabricated builds. Um, as you see, that has nice air, air flow behind the back. And if my camera wanted to focus on it, that would be nice. But um, you will have to big, you know, pay big attention to how you install these, because as you see around the basket, the, the air flow is really limited. So if you mount this in a chunky uh, ring, then that's gonna block the airflow on the side all the way around so you really have to chamfer it and be careful with that because otherwise the sound is going to be affected big time so that's that and we are going to use the grills for them but that will need a bit more attention than usual because we really don't like how that fleshy um, edge of the basket on the mid-range can still be seen once you use the grill and it doesn't really match well with the tweeters which are black I just turned this one around for you that they have a nice black finish and it, it doesn't really go with the mid-range that's just cosmetics but many people you know care a lot about that and the client has a great attention to detail too so yeah I will have to be very careful how I install these when it comes to the look um, and then yes the tweeters will go to the sail panels I will have to figure out which option I use because these tweeters the the, the the new Utopia M, they come with an end cap that you can pop onto the back of the magnet and then that's going to alter the FS of the driver so it can play lower depending on whether you have the cap on it or not. Um, we don't need it to play low to be fair because the mid-range is going to take care of, you know, probably it's going to play up to like uh, 3, 4k and then the tweeter can take over but we will see what the response is in the car once actually the build is done. But yeah, these are really pretty. Going to the sail panels that we have actually custom 3D printed. 
mounting rings for them. I'm not gonna use the factory mounting brackets, um, which makes life easy for many people, 100%, because you, you can bolt it in through that hole into the build and then bolt the tweeter in. Uh, but you can't make it flush with it because it, it sits on the surface. Yes, it's only probably one and a half or two mil, but there you go. And yeah, that's the cap that goes to the back of the tweeter. Um, and JL sub, yes, is the 13TW5, um, which is gonna go underneath the floor because we have a good five inch underneath the floor where everything is gonna be placed. The amps pretty much where they are at the back. Uh, the SP somewhere, I don't know where yet, we're gonna figure it out. Um, sub is gonna come here to the back in a shallow box and then I will have to modify the trim panel in the trunk so the sub can breathe through, but we will re-carpet the, the panel so no one is gonna tell what's underneath. And there's enough airspace underneath there not to worry about the heat dissipation of the amps, especially in UK. And those amps have huge heat sinks, so they, they work really well even in hot conditions. But if we had an issue with them in the summer, then we will put fans in for circulation underneath the panel. So this is it for the trunk, and I'll show you the front. Oh yeah, just a, a quick footage to show the speakers from the other side, because <laughs> I'm sure you want to see that as well. Well, the mid base won't be seen. Fortunately, when the car was dropped off, uh, the owner had a chance to see them in his hands and see the engineering that went into those drivers because once they are installed you will never ever see them again other than the mid-range and the tweeter and the GL sub it, it definitely looks quite something very very special and you can tell the crazy engineering that went into them to make them work in such a shallow space and a small sealed box I'm really interested what it's going to sound like because I've heard them before in other cars but that's not a, the best way to you know tell anything much about that because you hear the system not the actual component but I'm gonna be interested what it's gonna do uh, in my hands and then actually I haven't even mentioned anything about the amps yet so we have two Zepco Z150.6 each six channel so we have 12 channels all together because we need four channels for the mid tweets in fully active the client insisted on using bridge channels on the eight not if we needed that much power because by the time you have that much headroom on the mid base it's going to overpower the mid and the tweeter so you would, you will just have to pull the level back if anything we will have a lot of headroom in the amplifier keeping distortion levels very low um, and i'm not against that i have a lot of power in my car as well making sure distortion levels are low but even on a single channel those drivers would be just fine because they are pretty sensitive anyway so they are going to use two two channels so all together for the front end we use eight then we need two channels bridge for the sub that's 10 and then we have two channels left for integrating probably the rear doors in the car with the harman and carbon speakers just like i did in the m5 uh, in the summer you might have seen that build and they will just work fine as, as rear fields for different scenarios um, for the front end experience we will run the rear as a differential as differential rear feel that DSP can easily do. So yeah, this is the plan with all this kit. So up front we have the latest BMW beautiful display. Um, and to be fair, operating it is, is, is so cool. So I can understand why the owner wants to use it. Um, the USB is in there, place black um, and it works fine, it even has this gimmicky gesture, volume thingy, which, which I always laugh at, because then you can use the volume knob there or the steering wheel, so but hey ho, technology, right? Um, so the mid-range is going to go there to the pillar, rather off axis, because it's going to be, you know, fine up to the beaming point, and then the tweeters will go to the sail panels and to custom fabricated um, solution, and the mid base is underneath the seats. But fortunately, the three and a half should play low enough. Well, once I, I you know, I make sure that the beard is, is proper. Um, 
it's solid the whole build is, is solid for the pillar the three and a half should play low enough to integrate the eights if you want to see more about bmw platforms i'm gonna uh, put links into the description where you can get more information about the characteristics the acoustical characteristics of speaker locations in cars like this most people think you know you know it can't work you just have to understand the limitations and you can work around it once it's tuned well you will never hear the mid bass from underneath the seat you will hear it up on the top of the dash um so up front yeah pretty simple the controller is going to go there but he won't really use it um and we're not using center speaker definitely not using center speaker um and he has the heads up display as well which is cool because then you can see all the playlists and everything in front of you or well, not now but yeah this is the plan for this car so guys this is it for this one uh feel free to share it comment um subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet and i i bring the next one once this car is actually built so yeah probably in a few weeks but i i try to bring some some other content for you very soon take care